a year so make plans and make arrangements to come and bring somebody to call somebody and amen we got a list of things and if you will come up and uh, put your name and bring something uh, for our fish fries just a time of fellowship and try to bring folks out amen to visit with us amen and for God to somehow make us Help us to make connection with those. Amen. Well, I got some good news today. Praise God. I, uh, a few weeks ago, we received an offering up for those, some of those folks, especially pastors that were affected by the flood in southern Indiana. Amen. I want to thank you for... Louisiana. Louisiana. I want to... I was getting ahead of myself and thinking about a number. Amen. Thank you for $3,180. Amen. So that's kind of an odd figure. You know, I punched that in. That was like, you know, da 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 point something. And I thought, man, let's just go ahead and round it up. Make it thirty-three hundred. There's three pastors. We want to give them eleven hundred dollars apiece. Yes. Amen. God bless you for giving. Amen. Just by reference is Brother and Sister Arsenault from Holden, Louisiana. Brother and Sister Robert Martin from uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Brother and Sister Daryl Marson from Robert, Louisiana. These folks will be getting an offering in the mail here in just a few days. And so thank you for your uh, generosity and your sacrifice. Amen. God's going to bless you. He has blessed you. Yes. And he will continue to bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glad to have Brother and Sister Glassman and their family here with us. Amen. 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 Let's sing and worship the Lord. Praise God. Thank you. The spoken words will fall. You breathe and life will fall. You knew that one day you would come. So far from every song. Love and you might fall. 
be seated. The Lord bless you. Let's prepare to give tonight in our offering as Brother Owens and Brother Dixon comes and receives our offering. Praise God. If you haven't given your world mission offering this Amen. This month, please do so. You think about going to a national youth conference the week of Thanksgiving. It's going to be in Indianapolis this year. Amen. So give some thought to it. We're going to need to, amen, to send our names in and register. Praise God. Jesus is good. Amen. I was running. Have your 
way today. God, have your way today. God, have your way today. God, have your way today. Sweep over my soul.
seated and God bless you. Amen. There's something in store here tonight for all of us. And then, uh, my, my advice and my admonition is to encourage you to reach out. Amen. In the next few minutes as we hear God's word. Amen. Receive the word of the Lord by faith. Amen. I believe he's got the man of God's got something in store for us. Amen. And let us open our hearts and our minds. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Praise God. Would you put your hands together and welcome to the Lord? Just love the Lord right now. I feel his presence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, I love you. Lord, God. Praise you today. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, we love you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I praise you, God. Yeah. I glorify you. Glorify you. Lord, you're worthy. You're holy.
Can we stand on our feet? Can we lift our hands? Can we just take that up prayer? God, take me deeper. God, take me deeper into your presence and deeper into your spirit tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we feel you here already tonight, but we ask you just to push us a little farther into your presence, God, just to pull us a little closer to you. We'll give you the glory, the honor, the praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 19. Ezekiel 44, 19. And you got it, say amen. amen. If you're going to cheat and look at the screen, say amen. Amen. It's good to be here with the Allens. And uh, I'm still blaming him for my daughter kissing a boy. She paid for their first date. But I think they broke up since then. And she was all right with it. She said, I already found another boyfriend. So <laughs> she's going to have to keep her out of the Indiana district. That's all. <laughs> you, got, you ready? You ready? Just about. Okay. And, and when they go forth into the utter court or the outer court, even into the utter court to the people. They shall put off their garments wherein they ministered, lay them in the holy chambers, and they shall put on other garments. Everyone say other garments. other garments. They shall not sanctify the people with their garments. It's the only scripture that I'm going to read, and I know it it's already sounds exciting. Um, <laughs> the people go forth into the utter court, even into the utter court to the people. They shall put off their garments wherein they ministered, and lay them in the holy chambers. They shall put on other garments, and they shall not sanctify the people with their garments. I want to talk to you if I can for a little while. I'm not sure what time it is. Okay. Uh, I do now. 7.30. We have plenty of time. And there's a clock down there, too. <laughs> and then if I don't get the hint, my wife will. <laughs> now, but I want to preach to you for a few minutes on this subject. A, a great high priest. Right. A great High priest. Look at your neighbor, tell him we have a great high priest. Now let's lift our hands and let's ask that priest to come into this place. God, we need you. Let your anointing, let your word flow in this house. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for your presence. Oh, let your spirit move. Give you the glory, God, and the praise for all the suffering. Thank you. Thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. Amen. And you may be seated. The, the anointing of the priests was, was quite an ordeal. Uh, they had to be stripped down. They had to be shaven. And they had to be cleansed from head to toe. It could have been that during this process, the cleansing process could have, could have taken a, a ritual seven days for this cleansing. But after this cleansing, the Bible says that they would come in with these garments. The, the lid breeches, the linen tunics, the finely woven linen and the ephod and all, all of these garments, even many of them interwoven with gold, with blue, with purple. They were extravagant. I, I believe that I heard a man say that if that garment was made today with gold, it would cost him upwards of $300,000 just for that tunic, just for the gold, just for the... They said today with the machines that they have, they still cannot weave linen that tight that they did then. They can't do it like they did for priest garments. and So they were pretty amazing, but they you got to understand something. They couldn't even put on the garments till they were clean. But then once they put on the garments, that's when they would bring in that anointing oil and they would begin to dump it upon their head and it would, it would begin to seep down into their clothes and into their garments and the smell and the residue of the anointing oil, it would cling to these garments like uh, I'm trying to find a good way to describe this, like like the oil from fried chicken after Sunday service. Everybody smells like fried chicken after Sunday service. And, and when we go out, when we, when we are getting ready for Sunday, my wife says, I don't know where they're going to take us to each day, but I have extra clothes or the kids have to change just in case we go to Mexican because you can't get that smell off of it. It just doesn't. We're going to smell like that for days. And, and that's what would happen. They would dump that oil down their head. And that oil, it had a really strong cinnamon smell to it. And I remember a few months ago I taught when I was at my father-in-law's church about this. And I got that, 
I got a little uh, sample of that oil that they had, and, and it smelled like cinnamon. And some of the ladies are like, oh, man, I don't like that. And something hit me, and, and I thought, you know, what if the man or what if the priest didn't like that smell? And I just told him, guess what? It doesn't matter what you like. It's what God liked. It didn't matter if you liked the smell or not. It was God's deal. That's the smell that he liked. And that smell would permeate those garments. Now you understand, the oil in itself was never allowed to be reproduced. It was not allowed to be put on strangers. It was... Right. You weren't allowed to make anything like it, this oil, or, or you'd be cut off. It was a certain smell that only the priest could partake of. It was a certain oil that only the priest could have. And what it did was it created a barrier of holiness and separation as it fell down the head of Aaron and over the beard of Aaron and onto the garments as he was anointed. It, it, it wasn't that there was a certain ingredient that was holy. It wasn't that there was a certain article in there that was holy. It, it wasn't that the fabric in itself was holy but uh, or was special or was even rare. It was the fact that they had set these things apart for God and they had set these things apart for Lord, the Lord to use them. There was a separation there. And when they began to separate that certain thing for God, it became special and it became powerful. I want you to know today there might not be one thing about you that the world thinks is special. There not by, might be one thing about you that you feel is special, but something happens to a person when they dedicate their life to God. And when they begin to separate their life for the kingdom of God, you become more than you ever thought you would be. You might not feel very worthy today, but I'm telling you, when you begin to separate yourself for the use in God's kingdom, He begins to put an anointing on you. He begins to separate you for Himself. Amen. You, you see, you might find that linen anywhere. In fact, it was the Egyptians that taught them how to weave that linen. You might find that linen anywhere, but you wouldn't find that oil anywhere else but in the temple of God. The Egyptian priests might have had fine linen, but they did not have the oil. They might have had the incense, but it wasn't the same smell that was being sent up by the sons of Aaron because there are some things that you will only find in the house of God. Can I tell you that there, there are some things that you won't find out there in the world? But I'm going to take that one step farther because there are some things that you won't even find in a denominal church. They might have the lights and they might have the music and they might have all the singers, but I'm going to tell you it means nothing if you don't have the oil of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. If you don't have separate... Let me Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. You'll never find anything like true apostolic worship. You'll never find anything that'll break chains like the anointing of the Holy Ghost. There's nothing like the true worship of somebody that has been set free by the blood of the Lamb. There's nothing like it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why we always quote the scripture that says, For the Father seeketh such to worship Him in spirit and in Truth. Well, you know that that word truth it means it means under any circumstance. In other words, God's looking for somebody that'll have the anointing in the spirit, but He's also looking for some people that can worship Him under any circumstance. Uh, can I preach to you for a little bit? That'd be all right. Uh, I found that people love to worship God when they get a, a raise at their job, and people love to worship. God when everything's been going fine and people love to worship God when they get good news and they love to come in and shout when everything's going fine but God said I'm looking for somebody that can worship me under any circumstance that can praise me when everything isn't going well I think in the church today there's a lot of trials and tests but God is just waiting on someone to say despite the trial and despite the test I'm going to worship God with everything that is within me I don't have to have it all right, but I can give God a good praise every now and then. Why don't somebody do that right now? Why don't you praise God outside of your circumstance? I might be in hell on earth, but I still got to pray. I might have lost my job, but I still have a praise in my spirit. Hallelujah. See, we don't have to worry about a high priest making a sacrifice for us. 
I don't have to worry about someone else doing all the worship for me. There was such a level of separation. There was such a level in the priest and the inner workings of the temple. And they were so secretive that the common man, he couldn't enjoy them. The common man would never know what that oil smelled like. And the common man would never know what the Shekinah felt like when that glory came into the temple. They'd never know about it. That's why there was such a warning from God that said, don't reproduce this oil. Because I know people are going to be so in inquisitive and they're going to be they're just going to have such curiosity that they're going to want to just have a little taste of what the priests are getting to partake of. And God said, but you're not allowed to do that. There, there has to be a separation. All right. Amen. It had to happen. Yes. Number one is because God couldn't stand flesh. He couldn't be around it. There had to be a separation of flesh. And the way they did that in the Old Testament was with the garment. The, couple, the separation came from the garment. Their flesh was cleansed. But the Bible says that the anointing is not to touch flesh. So it had to be put on a garment. That garment was so holy. Jewish scholars tell us that that priestly garment that Aaron wore was so holy. They said that if he would walk out into the camp, everybody around him would be sanctified immediately. And that's why God said, when you leave ministering the temple, don't wear your garments out there. Because I'm not sanctifying everybody. Come on. That's Old Testament. I don't want to sanctify everybody. No, but not everybody can be holy like this. My presence can't dwell around people like this. But, but I'm going to tell you something that I'm glad about. I'm glad that the Bible says we have a new high priest. Yeah. Hebrews tells us, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. We have a high priest and his name is Jesus. Yes. Amen. And I, I want to tell you a little bit about our great high priest. He was perfect and he was holy without measure. Yes. No one and no thing could match his holiness and the righteousness of our God. Right. In fact, the Bible says that our righteousness is like filthy rags compared to his righteousness. He is holy. He is righteous without measure. But let me tell you tonight, he's not interested in keeping his holiness to himself. He's not interested in hiding away and not sanctifying his people. But the Bible says that ten lepers begin to cry out to Jesus. In the Old Testament, the lepers were the dirtiest, the nastiest. Nobody was allowed to be near them. I'm going to make her do some camera work today. Nobody was allowed to be near them. But the Bible says that when ten lepers came, that Jesus didn't run away from them. He didn't hide from them. He's holy. He's righteous from his birth. Everything about him is good. But when dirty lepers come, he didn't push them away. He just said, go show yourselves to the priest and you'll be clean. But the Bible takes it a little farther because it says when he came down from the mountain, one leper came and not only did Jesus cleanse him but the Bible says that he touched him that's nothing like the Old Testament high priest that's nothing like take off your garment and don't be around the people that, that's a high priest that says your sin cannot push you away from me and, and your uncleanness cannot separate me from you because I am greater than the Old Testament high priest you see, even in his unclean and dirty condition, he can recognize the holiness of God because according to law, the priests or the, uh, the lepers were supposed to cry unclean, unclean, unclean. The Bible tells me that here comes a leper. And it said when he got close to Jesus, he began to worship him. Right. Yeah. And I hate to break the news to you, but you can't worship God and at the same time tell him how bad you are. <laughs> there was no way that that leper could have kept crying unclean, unclean, unclean. Eventually his vocabulary had to change from I'm wrong and I'm bad and I can't get it right to worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is God. Worthy are you, Lord. There's none like you. Every once in a while our vocabulary has to change. I know I'm bad. I know I'm wrong. But God you're holier than I can imagine. You're greater than I can understand. You are my high priest. You are my high priest. I, I want you to understand. And I, I okay, I'm good. I, I looked at the clock. You see, the, the true nature of God is holiness. You need to catch this. Human holiness and self-righteousness, the Bible says. The Bible calls it self-righteousness. 
Human holiness says, I'm better than you, so stay away from me. I'm better than you. I'm going to put a barricade up. You can get close, but you can't touch me. I'm self-righteous. I'm holy in myself. But God's holiness says, I'm better than you. But if you come get close. Close to me, I'll make you like me. I know that I'm holier than you, and I know that I'm more righteous than you, but I'm not going to say, stay away. I'm not going to put up a bear. I'm going to say, come closer, because when you get in my presence, I'll make you like me. Woe is me, for I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell among the people that are unclean. And, and I've seen the Lord, and the Lord said, get out of here, Isaiah, you're no good. No, he said, touch his lips with a hot coal, and, and just cause him to say the same thing everyone else up here is saying. Holy is the Lord God, Almighty God's not looking to throw you away. He's not looking to run away from you. He's not interested in shunning you. Oh, no, he wants to touch you. He wants to heal you. He wants to be near you. He wants to let his blood flow. Upon you, that's my great God priest. You, you see, it's a spirit of condemnation and guilt that wants to tell us Jesus isn't interested in ministering to you. Come on, come on, come on. My high priest touched a leper, and my high priest invited a publican to his house, and my high priest didn't feel too ashamed with a woman with an issue of blood touched the hem of his garment. While all the other priests and scribes and the other religious people were pushing them away and were mocking and shaking their head, Jesus, our high priest, was touching the sick and raising the dead. Yeah. 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 Healing the lepers and stopping funeral possessions. You see, the Old Testament high priesthood, the only thing that would cause them to be holy and set apart, I've, I've got to get where I was going. I did read one verse and I'm going to get to it. <laughs> The only thing that would cause them to be holy and set apart was their garments. Right. Right. That's it. Right. These garments were so holy and separate. Mm -hmm. We read about in Ezekiel that when the priests would even go into the outer court, mm -hmm. when they would go near the people, right. that they were commanded to take off their priestly garments mm -hmm. in which they ministered and to leave them in a holy chamber. All right. Now, it's going to be my holy chamber today. <laughs> <laughs> That, that was the command. And, and then they had to put on other garments. If you got time sometime, you, it'd be really, really in, interesting if you, would, if you would go find out what they did with the garments when they were too old to wear. When they got blood, I always wondered what in the world did they do with all these bloodied garments and stained garments and all, all of that. And the linen, it was all white. You, you'd be, I'm just, you can do that yeah. for homework. Leave those in a holy chamber and then go get other garments. Is that what it said? Yeah. Other garments. Yeah. These garments, uh, the, the Hebrews, the, the, the rabbis, they call these garments that they put on when they came out, they called them their conversational garments. That's what they're called. Other garments were really called conversational garments. So when we're done ministering, when we're finished going into the holy place, we're going to put on these other garments and we're going to come talk to you. All right. We're allowed to speak to you now. We're allowed to be near you because we have our conversational garments. You know, I began to think about that and I thought to myself, Jesus has no problem putting on conversational garments. All right. All right. He ain't got no trouble with it. I think sometimes when we come to church, we ought to take our conversational garments off for a little bit. From the door to the front and through church and after church, but that's free. He has no trouble putting on his conversational garments. In fact, he always puts them on before he puts on his ministering garments. When Adam sinned, before God ever killed a bullock, he started talking. Right. Yep. Adam, where are you at? That's right. mm -hmm. yeah. I need to talk with you. Yep. I'm your priest, and I'm getting ready to make a sacrifice for you. Right. But before I do, I've got to put on this conversational garment, and we need to talk. All right. mm. Before he healed a sick body, what will you do? What will you that I do for you? Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about this. Let's get this all worked out. Let's, 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 let's... Come on. That's good. Uh -huh. 